Well guys, we got some more news of Luckin Coffee and we got more details of how deep this scandal went to the company. Now I made my first video a couple weeks ago, I was more bearish on the company because there's a lot of things working against the company due to fraud, uh, everyone selling out of the stock, and then the US Senate voted against to have Chinese companies in the New York Stock Exchange due to corruption and fraud if they can't get American audited, and the president said some more negative stuff with the against Chinese interfering with uh, the stock market for Chinese companies. So all that happened and then I became more bullish uh, you know now that they're going to turn off turn over a leaf with a new CEO even though he was on board he might have been involved with the scandals but I felt more bullish that they're actually going to give us real numbers so we had more positive idea of what the their actual number is and they can only go up from there. So this is the new news that we learned about this company. Uh, that was posted two days ago. I'm a little bit late on this, but it says Car Inc. Chairman resigns as Luckton Coffee scandal escalates. So now we have another board member, not only the CEO, the CEO, but another board member resigns. And what we learned about this board member is that he helped instruct the CEO to commit fraud. So let's go ahead and read this details on this Yahoo Finance article. The head of Luckton Coffee Inc. resigned as chairman of Car Inc. as scrutiny over the high-flying Chinese coffee chain and its accounting scandal continues to mount. Shares of the car rental company Surge, uh, Lu, resigned as chairman as non-executive director of China's biggest rental car fleet operator to devote more time to fulfill his commitment with parent Ucler and other businesses according to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange Wednesday. The development comes after business news outlet Caxon reported Chinese regulators have obtained emails purporting to show Liu instructed financial fraud. Citing unidentified people close to agencies, regulators found evidence of fraud lucking in their investigation. Caxon cited several people saying, I won't go further into that details. But you can see that this scandal went more than just the CEO. CEO, their chair executive men who helped instructed those two people to commit fraud on the financials of the statement. That makes me more concerned about the CEO. The new CEO is a board and executive chairman in the company when he got promoted to interim CEO when the old CEO has left. This is this feels makes me feel like maybe the whole board was a part of this scandal. I mean, there have to be in an email chain or in the board meetings like what's the best way to raise profits quickly. So now I'm starting to move from the more bullish into the more bearish uh, of this company. But you know, there are more people getting like uh, resigning or getting kicked out. So maybe they're doing a good clean house, and we have more new executive comes in and actually gives us proper financials. So my hope for this company is quarter two in June, that's coming out uh, June 16th, I believe. Yes, pre-market uh, June 23rd. They keep pushing a date. It was earlier in June, then it became mid-June. Now it's being pushed further away. So that's like, why do you guys keep pushing your earnings? Do you got, do, is, the, is the corruption so bad that you need more time to look at your financial and give us real numbers of what your company is doing? So with that being said, uh, this is my hope for the company, and I can see a chance for this stock to do well. I think we're going to see an initial dip of the stock uh, when they report earnings, and it could go under a dollar or under two dollars. Most likely under two dollars, not under a dollar. They're going to give us real numbers. It's not as good as the numbers we saw last year since they were all fake, and not going to be good the numbers of quarter one since that was fake. So once we get real numbers, it's going to look proportionately a lot worse business. Uh, uh, sales they are doing that's going to shoot the stock down but that gives us a baseline to see how the company is currently doing and they only have room to grow and expand their business that way so after the stock goes down it's a good buying opportunity and then finally see good numbers and correct numbers in the future i doubt this company will commit any more fraud because they're being heavily investigated the the American investigators are watching them. The New York Stock Exchange is watching them. And then their own Chinese and uh, auditors are watching them. So, so many people are watching you that you can't really fake any more things. So it has to only go up from there. So I did learn new things about this company and 
people who are in China, how they interact with Chinese companies versus American companies. This was a user who commented on one of my videos about luck and coffee. So keep in mind, this is only one comment, but it might expand your mind into rethinking of investing in this company. He says, he says, have you guys traveled personally to China and physically took a look at who and how many people actually walk into luck and coffee? Are you sure you know the Chinese will patronize it? Seriously, I've seen many more Starbucks than Luckin. I also don't even want to walk into it. If they could doctor numbers, what about coffee ingredients? I trust what I see and I saw nothing near its peers. Even Gloria Jeans does it better than Luckin. He also wrote a second comment says, On a usual month, I would visit big or small city in China and Shanghai, in particular where the most affluent Chinese and Western people live. Out of the 10 coffee shops I see around the city, I can say at least 50 or more are Starbucks or Gloria Jeans or Costa. I don't see a lot of Luckin around. The only time I see saw was a store in some part of the city and I took a glance into the glass door and I didn't see a queue, meaning people standing in line. Starbucks anytime, yes, I am dead sure. Probably Luckin operates on a simple small outlet just catering to office workers or those who want to grab coffee and go. Costa Gloria, Starbucks, you see people sitting and enjoying their coffee. I might be wrong because China is too big and I happen to admit miss a lot of good places for Luckin, but apart from all the super chains, there are of course tons of artisans scattered through around Beaton and the local joint. I still see a clear winner, and it's the mermaid. I also do agree that the Chinese are patriotic people and fairly definitely love the country for some reason, and for some reason as well. You can see a lot of them favor western brands more than local business down the street, and the word is called, I can't read it, it literally the love of Western culture because it seems cool and a lot of young generation who travels and knows a lot of stuff. That's his personal point of view. But what happens when your company gets delisted from New York Stock Exchange? Essentially, you can't just trade stocks on New York Stock Exchange anymore. You have to go to different exchanges, for example, the Hong Kong Exchange, the London Exchange, and it might cost you a bigger fee to charge on a different exchange than the New York Stock Exchange, or you might have to create a new brokerage that allows you to exchange in that country. So you don't lose out your shares, you don't lose your money, you still have the same value in that stock. It just makes it harder to trade and costs you more to trade possibly. Now, with that being said, it probably makes the stock go down in general since less people have ex access to trade that stock. You have less access, then there's not a lot more volume to trade. Therefore, uh, it's less volatile going up and down huge, but then it, uh, it hurts the company because not a lot of people can invest in it as they could before. So that's why you don't want to get delisted from New York Stock Exchange, even if you have issues with your company. You guys are probably wondering what my current position is company. So I'll go ahead and share it with you. I did tell you earlier video, I was going to put about $500 in and I did. So I bought it twice back uh, on the 4th and the 5th of June. I bought it at $3.85 and the next time I bought was $5.61. So my market value is around $389 and I, my cost basis is $472. So I'm down 17% on position. However, this is pretty small amount in my portfolio since this company is very risky. They have a history of fraud and they have a lot to prove. So this is like you can see how small this position is in my whole portfolio and won't really affect it it's more of a spec play just for me to have fun you know less than one percent of my whole portfolio and i will see where it goes from there